This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. If you are glad to be in the house of worship, let's stand to our feet. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Uh, we can do better than that. The Lord has been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We worship the Lord in spirit and truth this morning. So please join our praise and worship team as they lead us in morning worship. Let's pray. Most gracious God, our magnificent and benevolent King, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy that showed up, Lord, when we woke up this morning. You've given us a reasonable portion of health and strength just to come into the house of worship once more. So whether we ran, whether we walked, or whether we crawled or stumbled to the house of worship, we thank you, Lord, for your provision, for getting us here this morning, Lord. But Heavenly Father, you have been good to us. You have been better than good. And so today we declare that we'll give you our best praise. So Lord, not only will we put our hands together, not only will we stump our feet, but Lord, we will lift up our voices with praise because you are worthy of it, Lord. And so bless those that are on the way. Bless those, Lord, that couldn't make it. Be with them and comfort them, Lord. For those that are in the virtual space, Lord, meet them where they're at. Visit them today, Lord. Bless the ministry and music. Bless the word that will be put forth this morning. Let us be forever changed, Lord. Let us be encouraged today, Father. In a world of discouragement, we know that we can find encouragement in you. And so for that, we say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you. Because you are great. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise one more time. Amen. Amen. 
We want to welcome you all to Christ Temple Church. We are a Christ-centered church connecting people to Jesus Christ and to one another. And it is, is always a delight to be in the house of worship one more time. And so we're also happy that we're going to be worshiping this morning with our sister church, Iglesia Kesanami. And uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's give a round of applause for being in the house of worship one more time. We always have a good experience, especially this being Pentecost Sunday. And we're also glad to have our brothers here from the Masonic Lodge Gravity 94. So thank you for being with us this morning. We're certainly blessed with your presence. And uh, they are sharp as a tack, cleaner than the Board of Health. And so we are delighted. I need to go take my suit to the cleaners. Amen, amen. Well. Welcome you all and a shout out to my wife and Jackson and Judah who are attending uh, vir uh, virtually this morning, a little bit under the weather, but thank God for, uh, for technology. So at this time, we'll have Bishop come forward with our morning announcements. Uh, thank you, Brother Daniel. Thank you so much. And again, we praise the Lord for the presence of each of you this morning. Uh, this is a Memorial Day weekend. We remember those who have served and sacrificed for our freedoms, and we salute them this morning. Uh, please continue to remember my wife, Pearl, as she still is um, undergoing great discomfort with her uh, issues with the sciatica. Uh, it looks like the shot that she needs is still a couple of weeks away, so she's in some pain, and I'm having to make up the difference, you know, cook the meals and mop the kitchen floor. And... <laughs> so it's, these are some uh, interesting days, <laughs> interesting days. Yes, yes. Uh, we certainly want to thank Marie and Brother Sam for our new setup and coffee out, ho our hospitality set up this morning. Uh, hopefully you were able to stop in, get some coffee, uh, get a pastry and uh, uh, just a great time to sit down and talk with one of the brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's remember that our district convention, our Southern District Convention will be June 10th. That will be the uh, second Saturday in June from nine to 12. It will be a virtual convention. So you will do something you've never done before. You'll be able to stay at home and attend the district convention on June the 10th from nine to, tw uh, nine to 12 a.m. The um, Western Diocese Convention, we've been publicizing that. We hope that's on your calendar for June in which we will look forward to ordaining Minister Ferguson. We trust that you'll come and be a part of our fellowship. Today, as uh, Minister Ferguson mentioned, is Pentecost Sunday and Pastor Rod Hines has extended a very special invitation to Christ Temple to be our, his special guest at 3 p.m. today at the Messiah Lutheran Church. Ladies, don't forget your prayer call this evening. Our Wednesday in the Word continues. We're having great teaching, great fellowship on Wednesday evening. Don't forget our prayer list, praying for those who are unchurched, those who are unsaved. We want to see them come to the Lord, come closer to the Lord. And plus, God calls us to be his witness, which we will talk about more this morning. Uh, if you would like to do an evaluation of your pastor, your bishop, see Brother Kirk Johnson. He has, uh, he has the information if you want to do participate in the electronic evaluation. Uh, again, if you give in tithes and offering, be sure to indicate uh, if you do it by Zale or through one of the platforms where you would like your offerings to go. Uh, we are again so delighted to have Pastor Julio here this morning. Uh, we were, uh, his wife, his son, and other members of his church, and Brother Melvin will come and minister right before the uh, message this morning. So shall we say amen? Amen. amen. Would you stand and join us in singing? Come on and bless the Lord with me.
should have got you on your feet. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you could turn with me to Acts chapter 2. Uh, we'll read verses 1 through 12. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. It's also on the screen as well. It reads, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? This is Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. May God add a blessing to the hearer, reader, and most of all, the doer of his holy word. Uh, if you all will remain standing, I'd um, like to invite um, Brother Melvin up to uh, lead us in a couple of songs before the uh, word of God. Good morning. Amen, amen. Praise amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good, amen. Amen. If that's for the Lord, can we give it a little more, a little bit more louder? Yes. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. 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 So I'm gonna invite you. 
So just take a moment and uh, just close your eyes and just think of um, the Lord's goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Ahí solo cierra tus ojos y nada más piensa en las maravillas del Señor. That if it wasn't because of Him, we wouldn't be here tonight. Yes. Maybe we can take a time to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for thank dying you. at the cross. Thank you, Jesus. You has given us freedom. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made. Thank you. You, has, you have restored us. Thank you for that sacrifice you made, Lord. We're able to be here and worship you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. To you be all the glory and all the honor. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. You are good. You are beautiful, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. There is no one like you, Lord. Even though we may speak a different language, different tongue, but in the spirit we worship the same king, the same Lord. And it doesn't matter what language we speak. As long as we worship the same Thank king, you. the same Lord, that's all that matters. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. more time to God be the glory 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 for all the things he Adiós a la gloria, adiós sea la gloria, adiós sea la gloria, adiós. No one like
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. resurrected Lazarus we serve the same Lord who healed the one who, who couldn't who couldn't walk the blind that couldn't see he healed them it's the same Lord that we are worshiping this morning there is nothing impossible for him if you could just believe you will see the glory of God if you only have faith as a mustard seed, anything is possible. Amen. Anything is possible if you would just believe. Those moments that you feel like you just can't do it anymore, you're not alone. Just keep, keep praying, keep praying. Their answer is closed. He's going to answer your prayers shortly. Amen. Yes. Amen. Even when you don't see it, but he's working. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Even when you don't feel it, he's yes. working. Thank you, Lord. He is the way maker. There is nothing impossible for God. The devil may try to destroy you. The devil may try to kill your spirit. But if you are with God, Nothing can be against you. Thank you, Jesus. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yes, yes. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Thank you for who you are. Thank you. Thank you for everything you have given us. Thank you, Jesus. But thank you for the sacrifice you made, Lord. Thank you for giving us thank you, eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. thank you for giving us the peace you, that the world cannot give us. Thank you for everything you have done. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory and all the honor. Thank you. Amen. Amen. may be seated. Thank you, Brother Melvin. God bless you. Our God indeed is a way maker. There is none like him. The God who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or even think. Amen. 
I want to invite you this morning to take your Bibles and come with me to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. And there I want to read one verse this morning. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. This morning when I looked at my cell phone, I have a calendar on the um, front screen of my cell phone. And it said Pentecost Sunday. And if we were to think a few moments about the official church calendar, uh, the church around the world, this is also known today as Pentecost Sunday. Well, what is Pentecost Sunday? Well, many have referred to it as the birthday of the church. The birthday of the church. And because it is the birthday of the church, one of the good things about being here this morning and and having our uh, Spanish church worship with us, um, when you think about that very first Pentecost about 1,700 years ago, sometimes we're under the misconception that Pentecost is something that was discovered uh, on Azusa Street here in Los Angeles, California back in the early 1900s. Well, that was indeed a great move, a mighty move of the Spirit of God, but that's not the origin of Pentecost. You need to travel back about 1900 years after the uh, birth, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He told his disciples to go back to Jerusalem, and he says, there I want you to wait for the promise of the Father. And the Father is going to send, he's going to send the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, who when he comes and when he uh, comes upon the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to be filled with power. And at that moment, and during, as a part of that experience, there were all kinds of people there, and uh, from different nationalities, different ethnicities, they were all there, and they all came together to lift up the wonderful works of the Lord our God. And so I think that we are modeling that this morning as we have our sister church here, and I'm reminded even as I think about that of the little children's song that we grew up on in Sunday school. Uh, We are all somebody to God, red, yellow, black, and white. All are precious in his sight. And that's what we need to be reminded of this morning. God wants us to have and experience unity in his church. And God wants us to realize that as members of his church, we are to be on mission. We have a task to accomplish. We have an assignment that has been given to us by our Lord, something that we should be about every day, all day, and that is to tell our world of God's wonderful love. We have good news. And because we have good news from God our Father, we as the people of God are to be on mission. There is something that we ought not talk about, but we ought to be about. In this book of Acts, and especially chapter 1, Jesus announces that I want you to go, and I want you to wait, and you're going to be empowered. You're going to get that 
wherewithal that you need, that boldness, that authority, that conviction of heart, soul, and mind, so that you can tell the story, share the good news of the gospel in Jerusalem, start at home, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. This is our assignment. We are called to be witnesses. We are called not just to gather together to learn about the Bible, called not just to come together and then have fellowship one with the other, but God has called us to be his witness in the earth. Sometimes I think as a church today, we live in Acts chapter 19. In Acts chapter 19, Paul the apostle was out on a missionary journey. As you know, Paul was the great church planner. He went around and he planted churches in various places. And then he returned again to check on those churches, to encourage them, to build them up in the most holy faith. He goes to Ephesus and he finds a group of believers and Paul asks those believers whom he finds in the city of Ephesus, he asks what we might consider a very interesting question. He says, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And those saints, those who were gathered in Jesus' name there, they said, we have not heard of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, well, what, uh, John, uh, Paul said, well, what baptism were you baptized into? And they said, we were baptized unto, into John's baptism, a baptism that looked forward to the coming of Christ. So they were still looking for the Messiah. And so Paul had to inform them that the Messiah has come. And not only has he come, but he has went to the cross for us. He has been raised from the dead for us. And he has now sent back to the church the Holy Spirit so that the people of God may be equipped and empowered to share the good news. When the Holy Spirit comes to the church, the church has power. When the Holy Spirit comes to the church, the church has joy. When the Holy Spirit comes and fills the heart of the believer and fills the church of God, we get up out and we get up and get out and get busy for our Savior. And this is exactly what we see. And I want us to visit in Acts chapter uh, 2 this morning. And that's where I want to spend just a few moments. The Bible says there in Acts chapter 2, which was read in our hearing, they were all gathered. Everybody was in their place. And that's pretty difficult to do nowadays. Somebody said that, you know, it's a strange thing about COVID. Everybody's returned to their, uh, all of their normal activities. The only place that people have not a turn, uh, returned is the church. Uh, they're going on about their shopping. They're going on about uh, all the other activities of life. But the one place now it seems that you can get COVID is in the church house because that's the one place where people have not returned. But here they were in their place. They obeyed the Lord who sent them back to Jerusalem and told to gather. And they went to that upper room and there they were in the upper room gathered together. And not only were they all in one place, but they also were all on one accord. Now, whenever you can get all of God's people to get on one accord, you have seen a miracle where we're all dotting the same I and crossing the same T's and we're all speaking the same thing, you have seen a miracle. And they were united uh, there in that upper room. They had spent 10 days praying uh, together. And as they were praying together, the Bible says, while they were sitting there in that upper room, Suddenly, the Holy Spirit of God came from heaven. There was the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And the sound filled the room where they were gathered. There were four tongues of fire that set upon each of them. 
And then they began to speak, the Bible says, in other tongues. But it was not a gibberish. It was other languages. They began to speak in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them ability. Now, in Jerusalem at that very same time, they were... Um, there many pilgrims had come to Jerusalem or what we would call tourists and they were there to celebrate the feast of the first fruits they were there to celebrate this feast that they observed at the time when that first um, fruit would come in from the harvest and they came together to thank God for his blessing on the land so the city was literally Field with pilgrims from all over the then known world, all over the Mediterranean, the Greco-Roman world. All of these pilgrims had come together and all of a sudden they were made aware of this sound that had filled that room. And you can imagine just as when we are maybe walking or driving and all of a sudden we hear a sound that grabs our attention. We turn to look, we stop to see what's going on. We see a siren, a uh, fireman or the police pass by and we wonder what in the world is this all about? Well, they heard this great sound and they began to hear them speaking uh, and so they came together to see what was going on because the people who were doing the speaking were the Galileans who were gathered in this upper room. The Galileans were not known for being a very intellectual, sophisticated, erudite group. They instead were known as the country bumpkins. So how in the world were these people all of a sudden able to speak in all of these different languages. And as they, they said there were people there, there were the Elamites, the Medes, there were people from Macedonia, there were people from Cappadocia, and they began to hear each in their own tongue. So here we had the last group of people that you would ever think of, all of a sudden possess the ability to speak in a multiplicity of different languages and they were so amazed and perplexed and wondering what in the world is going on? What does all this mean? And somebody uh, tried to make light of the situation and they said, well, they're just drunk. But then the Bible says that Peter stood up. And Peter, the one who had denied our Lord, who had cursed and said that I never knew the man. But all of a sudden, this Peter, now filled with the Holy Spirit, is given courage and boldness, and he stands up and he says, these men are not drunk, they are not intoxicated, but they, it's only nine o'clock in the morning, and in that culture, uh, it would be highly irregular. It would be totally out of order for anybody to be drunk at 9 a.m. in the morning. And the reason I say that is that might not be true of our culture. There, there may be some folk who are drunk from, at 9 o'clock in the morning. But Peter says, what you are seeing is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, God is going to do a new thing. And when the Holy Spirit came and filled that upper room and filled the hearts of all of those who were gathered, God indeed was doing a new thing. Because through the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was restricted and reserved for a chosen few the prophets, the kings, certain craftsmen were filled with the spirit and empowered and enabled to do certain things. But now he says the almighty God is doing something he has never ever done before. He's pouring out his spirit upon all flesh upon all of our sons, our daughters, young men are going to dream dreams, old men are going to see visions, 
He's pouring out the Spirit upon maid servants and men servants, upon those who were slaves. And he says, and God is going to show wonders in the, earth, in the skies above. But the greatest wonder of all is the wonder that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That God is now making his spirit available to everyone. Anyone and everyone, not just the preacher, not just the deacon, not just the mother in Zion, but anyone who would make themselves available to God, God will fill you with his spirit so that you can do his will, so that you can walk in the wisdom of his word. God is doing a new thing. And brothers and sisters, we need to be reminded sometimes we can struggle as we uh, endeavor to live for Christ and we get caught up with this habit and that habit and this addiction and that addiction and we get caught up with an unclean mouth and an unclean heart and unclean thoughts. Well, if you are born again, first of all, you know that the new birth is what God does by his spirit. God, the new birth is something that happens by the Spirit of Almighty God. And when the Spirit of Almighty God fills your heart and your life, he gives you power to say yes to God. You say what thought, when you read this book, and this is one of the reasons that every child of God needs to be well acquainted with the book, because the book shines light on my pathway. And as the light shines on my pathway, and I know what the will of God is, when I understand the word of God, and you ask yourself, well, how can I do all these things? Love my enemies. How can I have a clean tongue where I'm no longer spewing forth profanities? How can can I have a new heart where I'm no longer chasing the man or the women of the world? And how, what, what, what's got to happen? You've got to be filled with the Spirit of God. And when you are filled with God's Holy Spirit, you have new desires and new appetites. You can walk in a new direction by the Spirit of the living God. We are transformed. He says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, and this is always to me the greatest news of all men that has ever been given. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Rich, old, young, poor, black, white, male, female, if they will call upon the name of the Lord, God will save you. Well, what does it mean to be saved? It means to be delivered from sin. It means to be set free. God will set you free from the old lifestyle, from the old ways, the old attitudes, the old behavior. He will set you free from guilt and shame you can be transformed uh, by the king by the spirit of God you are transformed to where you move from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light this is the message of salvation we live in a time in a culture where we have so many people who def desperately need a new start I mean, there's just, there's just so much happening in our culture today, and we're so confused about so many things, but, oh, if we would only allow the Word of God to lead us into the light, out of the darkness of our culture, and into the light of His saving grace, and then to know His Holy Spirit indwelling within us so that we can be filled with what I need to live like God is calling me to live. He says, I want you to understand that the church, the church of Jesus Christ, you know, so often we in the church of Jesus Christ, um, we're, we're like the proverbial football team and we, we, we spend too much time in the huddle. 
We, you know, nobody goes to watch a game to watch the players spend all the time in the huddle. But God has given us his spirit so that we can get out of the huddle and we can make the play. God can give us his spirit so that we can go into our world and we can make a difference. God has given us his spirit so that we can go and share the good news of Jesus Christ who came to save and deliver men from their sin. We've got good news, and the only way that we're going to get this good news out, we've got to know the power of God's Holy Spirit. He says here again, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. When the Spirit comes, we've got to tell the good news. When the Spirit comes, we've got to live like the Lord would have us live. During the past several weeks, I have a, um, I typically use an um, electric toothbrush. And I, I, I noticed that my electric toothbrush was uh, getting slower and slower and slower. And I had begun to say to myself, you know, this uh, toothbrush uh, must need to be replaced. It, it's about time I've had it a little while. It's about time I ordered another one. But something said, make sure it's plugged in. And lo and behold, I looked over at the wall and the cord that should have been plugged into the socket was just lying there on the counter. So it's no wonder that the toothbrush was going slower and slower and slower because it was not connected to the power. It was dying because it was, there was no fresh infilling of power to recharge those batteries. And I said to myself, oh, I think this is what our church is like at times. We are going through the motions and we're trying so hard to be Christians and trying so hard to sing the song and you've got to us to pump us up to get us to say amen and you've got to ask us to shout hallelujah uh, because we are disconnected. We are living too far away from the power. But I tell you, when you are feel, when you are connected to the power, and the power is the spirit of the living God. Wonderful things begin to happen in your life. All of a sudden there is a joy in serving the Lord. There is a hunger to read the word. There is power in your witness and in your going forth in Jesus' name. But you've got to be connected to the power. And the power source for the church is the Holy Spirit of God. You're going to struggle. And when I, I, when we, so often when we talk about the day of Pentecost, people really, really are interested in the speaking in tongues part. And oh, how they, uh, the church has been divided and the reason that uh, we're not connected with another branch today is because they said, if you have not spoken in these strange languages, then you haven't been spirit-filled. And people just have split and separated and formed different denominations around the speaking in the tongues aspect. And then there's some other folk that uh, they say that when you feel, you just make a whole lot of noise, and you just and they're interested in noise in the church. They just want noise and emotionalism. But I say to you that God gave us the spirit not to toot our whistle, but God gives us His spirit to get us on down the track. God gives us His spirit so that there is a boldness for communication, so that there is a courage to bear witness for Christ. That's why the Spirit is given. Not, it's not about the tongues. It's not about the noise. But it is about uh, the ability to communicate with boldness and with authority the fact that Jesus saves. 
and that if you're not saved today, you need to know him, and you need to come to him, and you need to worship him. That's our good news this morning. Jesus said after the Holy Spirit has come to the early church, you will be my witnesses. You can't do it if you don't have it. You will struggle until you know the third person of the Godhead, the Spirit of the living God. And we're going to sing that as a hymn this morning, Spirit of the Living God, Fall Fresh. And I wonder if you are here today and you look at your life as a believer, you say, you know, I've probably gotten a little too, away, too far away from the power source. And I need to check that connection. Or I need to be plugged in so that there is power in my life. Power to be a witness. For Jesus the Savior. Let's stand this morning. Let's sing together. The altar is open. We invite you to come this morning. If you say, Lord, lay your hand afresh on me. Do something in my heart, in my life. I need power to live for you and bear witness. Shall we sing? Spirit.